I got this comment that said the weird over-sexualization of black men here. Ready? Three, two, one. I got a comment, I got a couple comments on my Abraham Preach video that I just posted, and it's such a fair comment, but also implies something that my brain will not allow, which is a miscategorization, and I so appreciate the feedback, but I'm also gonna dismantle the f out of it, okay? I'm gonna deconstruct, I'm gonna tear apart, I'm going to rip it to shreds, because this is an opportunity to talk about bubble perception differences, right? So my work is a little different than everybody else's on YouTube, because I'm trying to show the world that everything we do is relatively a part of free will and not free will, because who knows what part of us actually has agency and what part of us doesn't, but either way, we're all having a relationship with that perception of free will, or our perception of choice, or our perception of how we process and observe the world around us. So what shirt am I wearing today? Pop the bubble. See uh, our merch store. Links down below if you guys want to uh, get it tank top yourself. Pop the bubble today, guys. That's the theme. Obviously, before I get into this, for those of you who don't know, and I assume this commenter didn't know, Abba and I are friends. I was really lucky to meet Abba, I think like last year, and we connected, we vibed. I call Abba a cousin. He feels like family. He feels so good. We don't know each other very much outside of work in that sense, but we do catch up on occasion, just like a nice little message here and there. How's life? How's life treating you? Hope you're good. You know, very casual, very on occasion. And, um, Preach knows who I am and I have a good relationship with both of them in that sense, like a working relationship. It's really good. And Abba and I have humor. We talk to each other in a very particular way. In the past, Abba and I have been accused of having a relationship, which neither of us have. Uh, we, we have not been in a relationship. Abba met me when I was already courting my now partner. And he's always been very... Uh, He's always respected and always been very, I don't know, just normal around me. And the fact that I'm in a relationship, he's never overstepped boundaries. He's always been a gentleman. Um, my partner is cool with how him and I interact. We're good. Everyone's on the same page, except the internet. So when the internet sees me interact with ABBA, sometimes there can be a question. What's this girl doing? Why are they talking to each other that way? Isn't she married? Oh, I bet ABBA's been with this girl. None of, you know, it's just, I get it. It's the internet. But the internet did something very interesting. <laughs> and I've never been accused of this. So this is very interesting for me. I was accused of over-sexualizing the boys, like fetishizing ABBA and Preach. And I've never been accused of doing this to a person. So this is really new for me, but in fairness, they probably never watched my content. And in fairness, the way I talk also assumes my audience is at a certain understanding of how we have this conversation. Okay, let's get through these comments because I'm very excited to see what you guys have to say about this because I thought it was interesting. But of course, if this person is in chat, they can also reply. I totally get it. Okay, so I got this comment that said the weird over-sexualization of black men here. And they left a timestamp, which I really, really appreciate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click it. Move. You and they are dancers technically. Look at Abba with. Hold on, I am blocking past Brittany from being seen. So I'm gonna move uh, today, Brittany, over to the right hand side of the screen. And yesterday's Brittany's in the corner, as you guys can see. His little shirt with his little chest showing. Myron could first of all lesbian shirt. This is what I call the Brad Pitt lesbian look that men can pull off and ABBA pulls it off very well. This is a lesbian chic look with the shirt slightly opened, necklace around the neck, and you just know they're good at dancing. And this is Brad Pitt, if you want a white example, is the best example of pulling this off. Lesbian chic. ABBA also pulls it off very, very well. And I'm not gonna feel bad for pointing it out. Chat says it felt more like a gay compliment. Oh, this is very homosexual. So just to preface this as well, I'm a queer person and Abba knows this. Abba knows I gay flirt with everybody. And the reason Abba and I have a good friendship is he would never assume it was something for real. Do you remember that story I tell where I had to warn certain people, like if you really hit on me for real, I will end our friendship because it's a disrespect to my marriage. Abba and I, we have banter because we know nothing is gonna happen. And my partner knows nothing's gonna happen. And we know we're just having fun because Abba Abba is gay safe. Abba is the straight man who over the years has become so comfortable in his masculinity that he's okay being kind of gay. That's why there's all these gay jokes that happen on Abba and Preach now because Abba has grown so much. He's safe. He is safe for banter. I just want to make it clear how Abba and I have banter because again, you're coming from a perspective of assuming there's something going on that isn't there. And I just want to make this clear. I'm not blaming you for having that assumption. 
When, to be honest, like if you don't know me and you just see me, you might have come to a really good conclusion had I been somebody else. So no hate to this commenter because I think they're coming from a very specific perspective and they stereotyped me, right? They call me like, they say like, oh, like white woman fetishizing black men. So they stereotyped me in a very specific way. They saw me and assumed, which is fine, right? But look at the way Abba and I banter, which is why when I comment on him now and preach, I have a very relaxed way of doing it. And also shout out to Preach for being a daddy because he rides a motorcycle and has leathers. That's basically the foundational requirement of being a daddy. And if Preach, for whatever reason, finds it disrespectful that I've categorized him as daddy, if he it finds that disrespectful, I will stop because I respect Preach, but I think he's gonna see it as the compliment it is. I mean, the man wears leathers, you know? Okay, with that said, just for context of how Abba and I get along, okay? This was shot in November of last year. No problem. The worst time for an example is acceptable. Don't do that shit again. See? But when a girl does it, you don't say shit. When a girl does what? Yeah, punch you in shit. It, what a, what a girl, girl you don't me? even <laughs> what, what what girl punched me peep game i was on the internet and i was just looking at this shit like and then a video popped up him and some girl and then i started the video because i want to know what the fuck it's about it's and then they start talking about relationships bruv i swear to god not but 30 seconds not but 30 seconds in the video the girl punches him and then later on like five seconds after she goes like that and you don't say shit what, what, pull the video. Okay, so right now, I was saying before my audio cut out that Preach is just categorized as Leather Daddy, but if he's offended by it, I will stop because I respect him. But this person was upset. I kept calling him a daddy, but not my daddy for the record, just categorized a daddy, just to be on, to be like, I'm just categorizing Preach. So this person was upset. I kept, I categorized him as a daddy. I think they kept thinking that I was calling him daddy, which I'm not, but also in gay bubbles, it's a compliment, not an insult. So I can't tell which part of them thinks that's fetishizing black men. Pull the video. <laughs> yo, yo, no, nah, no. Nah. Pull the video. Who, who? I don't remember what the name is. Brittany? Yeah. What'd she do? I'll pull it up because I know exactly. Yeah. By the way, I do see the irony of my Middle Eastern parents naming me Brittany. I do see the irony of being named Brittany. Watch at the beginning of the video. I was, I saw that shit. I was like, that's hey, how, everyone. That's how I do my podcast. That's what? my brand. That's a weird way to talk about loneliness. I'm gonna, <laughs> oh, bitch, okay, I okay. Could. okay, okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is why Abba and I got along, though. Plus, you got to imagine, I'm 5'1". In real life, I'm a very tiny human, and Abba is very tall. And so for us, when we're, like, joshing around, that's why Abba and I felt so safe together. I mean, it... It was so, it felt like family, like in a way, like, you know, that comfortable level you are with people you just meet and you're like, okay. And it's because it was just so fun. We went skating together. We hung out. We did a collab. He came on my podcast. Like we had a lot of fun, right? So this is the energy between us already. Never. Okay. You want to know why? You know why she gets I don't give Hold on, hold on, hold on. Actually, it doesn't matter. You ready to see why? Go ahead. Why? Because I could. Oh, sure, sure, sure. You feel this way now. I After, don't... hold on. After I show you this video, you under Okay, hold on. The better example of explaining, this is Preach is going to watch Abba slap me, okay? It's a spoiler. But an even better video explaining my relationship with Abba is when he went on flagrant. And again, Abba and I have a good working, working relationship. I consider Abba a friend. It's not like he's met my family or I've met his, but I respect him. I think he respects me. We have a good rapport. And this is going to set up the whole conversation around this person's whole theory around me fetishizing my friends, or at least my friend Abba. Preach is cool. Like, I, I wouldn't say we're friends, but I would say we're friendly. Okay, like, so this is a better idea of the story and why... Abba and I play to certain stereotypes on the internet to make stories better. Because remember, we're entertainers at the end of the day. We're streamers. When Abba and I did that slap situation, we called it BDSM, but it's not real BDSM and BDSMers know that. But it's like good enough for the vanillas to have some fun. In this conversation with Andrew, he refers to me as a snow bunny, like taking out the colonizer. It's funny, right? Except my family's from Iraq. We're Assyrian and they didn't immigrate here until Kennedy. So I couldn't have been a colonizer. I don't even come from the right brand of white, right? But it's a funnier story if it's I slapped a white woman to get revenge for my people. It's a better story. It's not an accurate story, but it's funny. 
Yeah. It's gonna be a white girl that is crying right now. Yeah. Okay, just crying in her Timbits. Yeah. yeah. Her tears freezing in Montreal. Yo, low key, I did slap a white woman on camera. Uh, Come on, bro. No, I'm serious. Jeez. You guys can pull it up. That shit was fire, man. Shout outs to her, Brittany Simon. Shout outs to her. Why? Her YouTube channel. Why? 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 She was doing some kind of BDSM thing, so she was slapping this white dude named Destiny. So I was like, I was watching, and then and then I was like, man, this is not fair. Somebody got to slap you, and, and Destiny's like, I don't feel comfortable. And I was like, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> and so I get up and I smack her, and yeah. honestly, it's so weird. Yeah. On her face? You're a hero. Yeah, right? <laughs> See, okay, so the joke is you're a hero for slapping a white woman. It's only funny if I was a white woman. It wouldn't be funny if Abba slapped an Arab. Well, that's not funny. And now you might not even say it's funny. Maybe you would say it's never funny that a man slapped a white woman, or maybe this, this. But the joke is we're like solving racism by slapping. It's like a joke right we're comedians he's a comedian i'm an entertainer i'm a youtuber right like it's a joke but it's not funny right it's not funny if you say like abba slapped an arab woman like you made it less funny so here's alex saying like oh you like you're amazing wow you really did one for the team Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus Christ. oh my oh. god Jesus we'll pull Christ. this up hold on run that gotcha yeah <laughs> i don't I don't like Al's sudden anti-white woman hey, yeah. hey, hey, reversal. Shut up. Come on. <laughs> you love white it's women. It's okay, okay, hold up. You know what, though? I've talked about this before. This episode, <laughs> I, I don't know if you're... You started pushing. Oh, my bad. Hold on, hold yeah, on. You, 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 is it in the video? Yeah, it's in the video. Okay, let me pull it up. Hold up. Uh, oh, you, you, this you is what I'm finding. Yeah, yeah, about. you'll find it. It's not that, it's not that deep. Oh, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here? Yeah, see where it changes color? You know. And watch, they're going to exaggerate. They're going to exaggerate their literal reactions because it's not even that big of a deal. Like, it's... It was fun, but see how they have to amplify everything? Everything is exaggerated. It's like a comedy. That was the point of the slap when Abba and I did it in Miami. Is I thought it would be funny. It's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be a joke. And then I realized like, okay, Abba, I think was totally in the joke. Like I think Abba's funny, so he gets it. I don't know about anyone else in that room getting it. Okay. But Abba got the joke. And so this will go down as like a funny moment, right? Might, might be a little bit back. Oh. But anyways, um, oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, oh this is crazy, bro. Oh. You're a wild dude for this, bro. Yes, I want to see this. <laughs> uh, no, hold, on. Oh. hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> and you can see like Abba and I are in the joke together and then Destiny's like hesitant. Like Destiny is unsure of himself, which is, you know, like Abba and I got the confidence. Cause we're, we know what we're doing. It's funny. Like, but we're also slapsticky. We're also very comfortable in our bodies. We come from a background that like, you know, I'm a boy. I wrestle with my brothers. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a physical person. You know, none of like, this is a very funny moment, right? Quality in life. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> oh my God. They, but we don't see it. it. What the oh, fuck is that? Oh, that's It had to censor it because uh, YouTube. Oh, hold, on. Yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. What the there's the full clip. So. so like, okay, it's a whole conversation. So just to preface, Abba and I have a friendship. We have an established level of humor. And every time Abba and I collab, there's always somebody who says something like, oh, I bet they're a couple. We're not a couple. We're comfortable. This is important. We're not a couple. We're comfortable. And sometimes when you see two people of the opposite sex hanging out who are comfortable, you can only then assume they're a couple. We are not a couple. We are comfortable. Feeling safe around somebody is really important. And I feel safe around him. And I think he feels safe around me. I don't think he would have done that with me if he didn't. And we both get each other's humor. So we both knew it was funny. And that's the thing. Going back to the comment. So this person goes down. I don't know if they're a woman. I don't know if they're a man. I don't know who they are. So they say, okay, saying Carlton is more black because he can dance and has a booty than saying uh, that having Riz is an essential part of being a black man. Okay, let's go to that clip. The boys plus our token. The boys plus our token. Golly. I mean, look, Myron is this category of black brown guy. He's not exactly a Carlton because Carl this is important. Carlton knows how to dance, but and Carlton got that booty, you know, but like he is the black guy that doesn't have Riz. Okay, for the record, he's not the category of Carlton. Because the difference, and I think this is, what, this is what Abba was trying to say, but I won't speak for him, I'll speak for myself. Myron isn't a Carlton. It is not 
in, it is not, okay, the episode in which Will Smith confronts Carlton over not being black enough, Carlton makes it very clear, no matter how he acts, he is a black man. His blackness is not dictated on his behavior. And Norm, I doubt Abba, I don't wanna speak for him, but I doubt Abba and I doubt I would ever make content saying you're not black enough because that's not what we're saying about Myron. Will says to Carlton, you're acting white. Carlton says to Will, I'm acting like a black man, but we're not a monolith. Myron, because of his internalized racism, in my opinion, rejects blackness regardless of how it appears and doesn't even want to own his blackness at all versus Carlton uplifts black women. Carlton uplifts himself. He's proud of his family and their accomplishments. Myron, okay, is having Freudian slips of I'm a white man and hanging out with white nationalists. Myron is hanging out with white racists while talking shit on black communities. And Myron is talking about black women like they're trash. That is not a Carlton. Carlton is a black man who's not a part of a monolithic idea of blackness. And Will puts a pressure on him and says, you're not black enough. Which the lesson in that episode is there's no such thing. And that's the dilemma with this commenter's like well-intentioned stereotyping of me and assuming that they, she, he knows what I'm talking about, but maybe they don't watch Will Smith, like Fresh Prince. Maybe they don't have the reference point. Maybe they don't know about categorization. Maybe they just assume everything's the same. To me, this is very, very specific. The reason that Myron is suffering is because he rejects blackness at every turn. Carlton embraces blackness and he says it doesn't have to look one way. And then tongue in cheek saying Carlton can dance and have that booty is a joke on the stereotype of what it means to be black. Look, I look very different in person, okay? You can ask Abba, but I, when you see me, uh, my body's very curvy. I got a booty, I got an aesthetic to me and people go, oh, wait a second. Brittany doesn't look the way I thought she looked. She's got this quality to her physicality that reminds me of not white women because the stereotype is women, women have no butts, but that's also not true. Just like that stereotype that white people don't season their food is not true. Some white people don't season their food. Plenty of white people season the fuck out of their food. The point is when you're talking about a bubble, you're also making a joke about a specific bubble. So the joke is Myron is so not black. He thinks he's white, hangs out with white nationalists, can dance and doesn't even have a booty. It's all tongue in cheek references and humor and stuff to reference sort of the way he is so far from his ancestors, if you will. Now the irony is I don't know if the Sudanese I don't know their body types. I don't know what they usually look like. I don't know if Myron is perfectly Sudanese. Like he's exactly what Sudanese look like. Cause I don't know, it's not my bubble. That's why it's a joke. Saying she's immediately attracted to Abba and Preach. I'm married, ma'am. Back off. They got Riz, you know? Myron doesn't have it, bro. Myron just doesn't. So they probably don't know I'm friends with Abba and Abba and I have already established that when he calls in, I tell him how perfect he is and how he'd make a great husband. And then he gets bashful. And then I go, you make a good husband. And then that's our rapport, right? Because Abba would make a great husband. Abba is a wonderful human. He really cares for the people in his life. He would make a woman very, very happy one day. It's just not me. And because Abba is safe, I can make the joke that says, I'm married, Abba, back off. He's a very kind person. So this person isn't a bad person because they're concerned that I might be fetishizing ABBA, but they're just dead wrong. So this part says, ju judging who is more fuckable, saying they drip sex and describe her arousal. They're doing this thing where they're making it sound like creepy. Okay, hold on. Uh, chat says, I feel like so much of the criticism people are pointing in your direction for this particular take are being very disingenuous and petty. I think they're triggered. So I'm gonna actually bring a compassionate perspective to this. I think they have trauma. Remember how I said people of color have to dismantle their own trauma? They have to deconstruct their own trauma, not dismantle, de de deconstruct their own trauma as much as anybody else. Like this is real. There are trauma in communities that force them to stereotype for survival. That's why they stereotyped me. And then they made a lot of assumptions because they don't know my relationship with Abba and Preach and they don't know my sense of humor and they don't know a lot of things. So they accuse me of being racist. As the comment goes on and we, ha we had a conversation in the comments briefly, I'll go over it but they're pretty upset. So I wanna validate their pain because I'm sure they're hurting, but I also wanna deconstruct the conversation because I think they're wrong, okay? So here is, their, they don't like this part either. Paris and Myron and tell me who is more bull and be honest. It is not Myron. Like, so I said, look at Myron and I said, look, tell me who's more bull, Abba and Preacher Myron. Now, listen, I don't wanna brag, 
But if you've seen my Instagram, I think I'm pretty full. Okay. Full is a very specific for me in my world. It just means like walking down the street, people would be like, oh, for sure, bro. I'd hit that. It's like, yeah, like you, you have a sensuality to you. It's like this thing. Oh, good point. I'll be honest. Chat says it's hard to listen to you talk about black people without wanting to get a little defensive. But then I just remind myself the conversation you're actually having. And I do want to say, I don't want to speak for like black communities or black people. I'm just speaking from my perspective as like, um, a person who's being accused of something that I just think is wrong. But also, if there is valid criticism here, then I'd love to hear it, especially since I think my audience is pretty diverse and I don't want people to ever feel alienated in that audience. But I also know that at the end of the day, I know there are differences between how our brains work, not um, like in a neurotypical neurodivergent way. Like this morning, I was making lasagna and I was heavily sarcastic with my partner. And for 30 minutes, he literally thought I was being serious. He goes, I love you. But when you're being sarcastic, you people cannot tell. I was like, I am so obviously sarcastic. So even on stream, I think I'm making the most obvious joke in the world, like the most obvious joke. And he's like, it doesn't always play because I think like you don't like people don't hear it. And to be fair, I don't even know. Like, I think I'm obnoxious as it is. So I I know that it's me, too. I know that it's also how I'm expressing myself, you know. So I don't know. I. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but I, I also like, I don't have my feelings hurt either. Damn. Like, I don't want to be out here being told I fetishize people. I've never been told that my whole life. So that feels wrong. Cause like, that's so objectifying, right? Okay. Now with that said though, if there's really valid criticism, tell me, cause I want to get it, you know, I want to be corrected. Um, so I said they're fuckable and like they turn me on, but I don't mean them as individuals. I mean the aesthetic. I mean, Myron evokes this feeling out of a person. I'm trying to describe maybe too viscerally a, a, a relationship people are having with one another. Sometimes that's too mean. I won't say that. Mm, mm, I want to give an example that's not too mean. Sometimes you see somebody who's in a relationship with somebody else and you're like, this person is too ugly to be dating this person. And it's not because they're physically ugly. It's because the energy they signal doesn't match the energy of their partner. So it feels confusing. But if people match, then it feels complimentary. Sometimes you can just look at a person and you're like, oh, you remember Skippy? Remember Abin Preach covered Skippy? Sometimes you look at Skippy and you wouldn't say, fuck, he's got a collection of lint in his bedroom from his belly button and he's very obnoxious. Maybe you wouldn't say Skippy is, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be mean, but it's like sometimes you look at a person, you're like, oh, no, thank you. Okay. Chat said Jay-Z and Beyonce. <laughs> okay. So when you look at Ab and Preach, you're like, oh yeah, I see it. When you look at Myron, you're like, um, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. When he says he has sex, I'm like, mm. I don't know. Maybe. It's not that I'm trying to be mean. I'm just saying like, mm, I don't know. Chat says, I personally can tell you are being very playful and funny, but I'm also on the spectrum. I wonder if it's a neurotypical people have a hard time reading your form of humor. Maybe. Your sarcasm is most obvious when you do your LA girl drag voice or when it's just something that makes no sense coming from you. So I registered as sarcasm or if it's a repeated comment. Okay, thank you. So, okay. I understand why they're upset with that. It can be offensive if you don't know the context. Okay, fine. Calling them daddy, talking about their hips and the way they must know how to move and dance. So they're dancers. Just right? screams daddy. So, okay, first of all, saying preach, right? Saying preach is a daddy is because he wears leathers and rides motorcycles and he's a top, okay? So I feel like, I don't know what bubble it is. Is it like a conservative bubble? Maybe it's a religious bubble. Maybe they're not, maybe they're religious. Maybe that could be it. Like, or maybe something like that. Maybe that could be offensive to call someone daddy. <laughs> Chat says, I'm black. And when you talk about black people, it doesn't raise any flags or concerns. Maybe I'm not black enough. Now here's another problem. I know that I am a middle person, okay? I know I'll never be Arab enough. I'll never be white enough. I'll never be black enough. I'll never be gay enough. I'll never be Asian enough. I'll never be anything enough. So I recognize that I am always going to represent that perspective because I'll never know what it was like, what it would be like to be one of my brown cousins because I'm just not brown. I'll never know what it's like to be my best friend who's white and we grew up next to each other because the internal relationship I was having with myself was different. Look, my best friend, I've known her since I was nine. She's white. And we had a very different internal experience. It's like being neuro neurodivergent. Everyone thinks you look the same, but internally you're having a completely different relationship with how you look and how you sound and who you relate to. And to be honest with you, I did grow up as that middle person who took a lot of solace and 
safety and like black bubbles on the internet. Um, that's why there's always shock for my communities when they're like, oh my gosh, Brittany, you know this black bubble? And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not immersed in black communities the way somebody else who grew up with them would. Because like, I don't, I didn't. I grew up in Orange County, California. I grew up in a white neighborhood. Okay, we had a Lebanese neighbor and we had us. And my friends, you know, as I got older, I have some black friends and everything, but I don't, I didn't grow up in black neighborhoods. But the entertainment around blackness was very relatable to me. I learned how to do my hair because of black YouTube. So I do have a fondness for black creators because I felt like they were a safe space for me to have a space. But of course, I'll never know what it's like to be a brown person, but I'll also never know what it's like to be a white person. And I think there's something really important to remember about that. In the same way that I'll never have the experience of knowing what it's like to grow up in my 20s without having borderline. I have no idea what that would look like. I have no idea how my life would look so different. So I am coming from a very specific perspective. Oh my God, Discord, stop, I'll cry. As a black person, you're invited to the barbecue, Brit. I feel safe around you. <laughs> I love barbecues. <laughs> Thank you. I do love a barbecue. I really do. You can come to a barbecue. I'll, I, I have a Middle Eastern barbecue. We do our middle, we have, Arabs have barbecues. I will invite you because let me tell you, we take our barbecues very seriously. I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm not ever trying to say that I could ever know what it's like to have an experience I've never had, right? So, okay. I'm, I'm not sure how to feel about the whole idea that they're upset that I called them attractive, I think. I don't know. It's very confusing. What is the line between expressing sexual interest and fetishizing or even just making like a gay joke or even just saying like, oh my God, I'm so into you. What is this? Oh my God, my pussy's so wet. Like, I'm sorry, do I hang around the different gay people? I think I hang around the very sexually charged gay people. <laughs> Have you never heard a gay guy say his pussy wet? Like, <laughs> I'm, I think I'm just in a different bubble. You know, I think it's that. I think there's a huge difference between making observations about an individual versus stereotyping a whole group of people. I agree. And I certainly don't want to, I don't want to do that. And I'm not doing that. I don't think anyone's a monolith, right? Which is why I like categorizing, which is why I thought I was doing the opposite. I do think I'm doing the opposite because stereotyping, in my opinion, is the lowest introspection level of categorization or extrospection. I'm sorry, the lowest extrospection of of category, categorizing. So we stereotype to quickly get an answer, which is why it's often wrong because we're going quickly. But also if you're used to pattern recognition, if you're used to seeing people and going, oh, this person goes into this group. Also, I think we all fill it, fit into groups. I think I, there's like probably a billion people who are just like me. Tell Girls, how many people in this audience? Borderline, bisexual married to a male appearing person, grew up reading vampire books, loves anime. Okay. Like that is so many people. Middle Eastern right? Arabs who love anime, very, very specific community, right? People see categorizing and immediately think it's stereotyping. Valid. I can see that perspective. It's not. But to be fair, stereotyping is, I think, a form of categorization. But I don't think categorization is stereotyping. So I think there's a part of that that, yeah, gets mixed up in people. Okay, next. I love, check, 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 check. <laughs> okay, Next, find it really odd for someone outside of a community to feel so comfortable about what defines a member of that community. I also commented on Arabs, but I assume they didn't comment on that part because they're not Arab. I assume they're black. So that's my assumption is that they're black and they think I'm commenting on black people. I am not talking about black people. I am talking about Myron and Abba and Preach and where they fit into different categories. And then if you wanted, I could stretch it out. Abba is not just black, he also watches anime and plays D&D. So now Abba is not just categorized by his blackness, he is more than that. And also remember that he's Ethiopian, moved to Can Canada, and Preach is Haitian and moved to Canada. They're not even American, so different bubble, right? It's different bubble. So when I look at Abba, different from Preach, Abba needs to explain nerd shit to Preach because Preach, though in the dance bubble like Abba, also veer off where Preach is more like cool and he rides motorcycles and he's got leathers. Abba is more like, I made this cool character for D&D &D, and also I like Luffy. They're different. They're different categories of black men, but also completely different categories of men. Lots of men do not watch anime and all of them are missing out. Even preach. 
<laughs> I mean, like, preach with, like, Dragon Ball Z. Who doesn't like Dragon Ball Z? You know what I mean? Okay. So then I said, I generally don't, oh, uh, no, no, sorry, that's not me. Somebody said, I get, I generally don't get how she did that. If there's an issue, please correct if I'm wrong. And then this person replied to that commenter and said, she literally said, all black men naturally have riz. And that's why Myron feels left out. Did I say that? Discord said Preach is literally a celebrity in Montreal and extremely successful. It's all about, it's all in French. It's just all in French. Love that. I love when they speak French. Okay. But do you see this part here, which I think is kind of interesting? Hello? Show me, Rachel. Even when I say show me, Rachel, you got to be in the bubble to get it. If you don't get that meme, you don't get the meme. Okay. So she, right here, right? That is not what I said. It's essentializing. I can see that perspective. If you only took into consideration the context of that one sentence and not the context, because if I'm doing that, then like Abba's doing that to an extent, right? We're kind of making it, when Abba said, I, you know, I questioned Myron when I knew he couldn't dance. We made the same joke, but neither of us are saying he's not black enough. It w it's a joke playing on the idea that Myron wants to be white. He's so white, he can't dance. Plenty of white people can dance, but it's a joke based off a stereotype. Right? Just like there are people who season their food and who are white. So remember that you have to, I don't understand, like the context, <laughs> show me, show it to me, please. <laughs> chat knows, chat knows. So again, it's like, I feel like they maybe misunderstood and it feels a little bit like a trauma response, which is so fair. And I'm going to talk about trauma in a second because I do think, like I said, black communities, people of color communities, every community, Arabs, all of us need to also deconstruct our own trauma around being ostracized and alienated in communities, whatever the majority we were born into. If you are a minority, you have to deconstruct that trauma, right? Obviously, she said, or they said, black men are are people like any other people. Some will be charismatic and some not. Agree, right? They went on to say that doesn't make some of them less black men. We know. I feel like they didn't watch the video. We know, right? That's the whole point. But I think like that's the thing. When you hear something and you just go about it and then it becomes a thing, it's like, I understand it, but that's not the, that's not the conversation that was being had, Right? It is a joke. It's a comment on the idea. Same way Abba made the same joke, but we don't mean it literally because that's like, you guys, white people do season their food. You cannot possibly believe every time you make a joke about white people seasoning their food, you think all white people don't season their food. We are not that stupid, right? Like nobody in this audience is that stupid because you would have to be so low level racist stereotyping to think white people don't season their food. And the same way you would have to think Black people inherently have riz because they're black. There are plenty of nerdy black people have no riz and they're called autist anime watchers. And that's a joke. I'm joking. But also black people can be nerds too with no riz. But obviously no one really, you would have to be very silly to think 8 billion people are being represented in our stereotypes, right? That'd be very, very silly. Okay, in the same way that like white guys can't dance, that's not true. It's not true. Like it is true some guys can't dance who are white. It's not true that white guys can't dance. So then they go on to say, which is totally fair, I totally get it, said she's literally talking about who's more f***able. Imagine if she was doing this to women uh, and which women got her more hard. I meant she, she made spit noises. Okay, see the bubble they're in? Imagine if she did this to a woman. Uh-oh. I hope she doesn't see my other streams. Is this a man? <gasps> this is a man. Is this a woman or a man? Or is this a they? Right? Like, for them to be like, imagine if she did this to a woman. Um, don't we do that, like, every, all the time? <laughs> don't I do it all the time? That's the thing. When people start saying stuff like, imagine if she did this to a woman. Imagine if she did this to a man. It's like, oh, hmm. There is that bubble that says like, oh, imagine if you did it to the op. You know how incels always say that? Or like misogynists? They'd be like, imagine if uh, we treated women the same way you treat men. It's like, okay, so you're in that bubble, right? So I can't fault this person. This is their whole perception. This is a straight man. You think it's a straight man? I bet it's a black man. Do you think it's a black man, a straight man, or a white man? Do you I think it's now a man. Now that I've read this, it does sound like a man. Imagine if she said this about a woman. That sounds like a man thing to say. Am I stereotyping because of a sentence structure right now? Or am I pattern recognizing? 
Am I Sherlock Holmesing it autistic style? Or am I stereotyping sentence structures? Whoop. What about isms? Exactly. Right when I see that, I'm like, oh, this now. Nah. Oh, Discord says it's a straight white man. Mm. You just reminded me of this beauty, Long Beach Griffey. I haven't seen Long Beach Griffey in so long. Anime fans. Oh, I love that already. You guys think straight black man? Yeah, maybe it's that. Maybe it is like, okay, so then it goes. Also, she calls one of them daddy and talks about their hips are good for dancing. If this was a man, keep in mind, I have met Abba. Okay. He moves good. Okay. If this was a man talking about Latinas, for example, it would be pretty gross and obvious. I have no idea what that means. Guys, explain it to me, please. If this was a man talking about Latinas, for example, um, again, I'm gay. Like I'm queer. So he's imagining straight people. First, he's thinking I'm straight. Then he's thinking that I wouldn't say that to a woman. Like, why wouldn't I say that? Like, oh, okay. Mm, okay. Like, like, I don't know. I think there's just like, you know, there's so much, there's like just manness in this whole conversation. Okay. And then, um, now I did, okay. This person did say, let's be real. It was a little weird. And we have our moments. Like we all have weird, weird moments. I only think it's weird if you think I'm a straight white woman who's fetishizing black men. I think it's only weird if you've miscategorized me, but I am literally a, a Middle Eastern woman that's friends with Abba, has met him in real life, and we have banter. And we basically talk like that every time we're on stream together. We're chill. So it's only wrong because I've been miscategorized. If I was just like a white girl who was like, oh my God, are you black? Is your big? Yeah, that you could accuse me of fetishizing black men, but I'm not objectifying me black men because they're black. I'm talking about my friend in a way that's comfortable as far as I know for both of us. If Abba, of course, is ever uncomfortable, he can let me know. But remember that one time on stream, people were like, I think you're making Abba uncomfortable. And Abba calls into stream and I was like, am I making you uncomfortable? And he's like, no. And I was like, okay, I'm just checking. So I can check in again. You know, we can check in with each other again. And I will, out of respect for Abba, change the way I'm talking about him. But I think he's good. And I think I'm good. In the same way, I don't mind if he goes around saying he slapped a snow bunny. Doesn't feel accurate to my lived experience, but it's funnier for the story. It's funnier for the story. And then I replied to them and I said, hey, it sounds like uh, we're in different bubbles. You don't get the humor, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I'll talk about it on stream. And they said, imagine a white person getting called out for saying something racist and then responding, you don't see my humor. You're just not in my bubble. Use jargon to avoid accountability, disappointing. All that high flutin philosophy lacks integrity. And I said, I figured that the issue was that you were painting me, quote, as a white woman who thinks black men are exotic, but that's the wrong category. I'll cover it on stream. And that was it. I think they probably, un they left. But funny enough, there was a comment up above that they made. Where is it? This person timed it for the Carlton joke and said, this is the, the, the exact time I became a subscriber to this channel. That person responded, the exact moment I unfollowed, it's basically just a racist joke stereotype. It's neither. Okay. And then the person, another person replied and said, yeah, I'm going to need her to explain herself because black people are the same as any other race and ethnicity. You either have or do not have riz depending on the people's preferences. I think we agree. <laughs> like... We agree, right? That's why that wasn't the conversation we were having. I was not saying all black men are the same. If you noticed, I was only talking about three black men in the video, plus Carlton, who is a mythical character, who is purposely put in situations in the TV show to teach us lessons about racism, right? So, um, I think that's good. I think I cleared myself up. Now, I want to talk about, I understand that people are not a monolith. I preach that all the time. And to be fair, I also think we're more than our race. We are more than our gender. We are more than all the things we think we are. So as an example, hold on here, let me pull it up. Immigrants grew up feeling superior to African-Americans, AA, which by the way, I'm also out of the bubble that says African-Americans. Guys, it has been a long time since I've been in a bubble that actively says African-Americans. I realized that when I got a comment on my video 
And I was like, African-Americans, right? That's what AA is. I'm just used to saying black now. I thought we got rid of African-American, right? Didn't we decide it's just not a vibe because not all black people are from Africa? Like, did we not, did we not dispel that? Anyways, immigrants that grow up feeling superior to AA, which is just idiocracy of supremacy. Uh, but I disagree that you say you we shouldn't be the ones to forgive, but you as a light-skinned white-passing woman is not affected by racism. And you have the privilege of looking at it philosophically. It's not because you're a level five or a level two. Well, the thing is, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't, right? I am absolutely in a privileged position of not being able to be clocked from very far away about my ethnicity, right? The white nationalists wouldn't want me making kids with them because I'd ruin the bloodline, but I'm also not brown enough to be fully welcomed in a lot of communities because I don't have the same suffrage. Absolutely, totally get it. I do, I'm no problem, which is why as a person who's never fit into a bubble, I've had to dismantle them or de deconstruct them. I think because I, even though I feel like I belong to Assyrian communities and I feel very welcomed there, I also don't perfectly fit into those communities because they're really religious, right? I could just move to Detroit, live with the Syrian communities, go to church with them. All my cousins are there. We'd have a great relationship, but I'm not religious. I don't want to be there with them. As much as I love them and I love visiting, I'm not religious enough to be there. I'm too gay for that scene, right? So when I say philosophically, you have to be more than your skin color. You don't have to do anything. I'm just saying you could. And that means who are you when no one's around? It doesn't mean who are you when you're being perceived. The reason I have the privilege to recognize that I'm more than my skin color is because I know the relationship I have with myself when I'm not being perceived. The dilemma is a lot of us don't get an opportunity to ask ourselves, who are we unless we're being perceived? The whole world has taught us that we are only how we are perceived. And I'm telling you, you are not. You can choose to live that way but you don't have to do that. I'm telling you, regardless of who you are in the world, regardless of how others perceive you, you can have a relationship where you perceive yourself outside of that. You don't have to do it though. And that has everything to do with five versus two in so many ways. Not always, not literally black and white, but it does. It's not just about my privilege, though I have had a lot of privilege to sit alone and not do things, right? I also am born with a brain that is incredibly rebellious and isn't afraid to do a lot of things that I think a lot of other brains might be a little bit more scared to do, which is so fair because it just means my brain is more prone to like openness of recklessness. Um, so it's not even like a good or bad thing. It's just like a, allows more options, but also more danger sometimes. Like I'm not afraid of living with zero dollars in my bank account if it means quitting a job that makes me feel bad. I'll sleep on people's couches. I'll sleep in my car if I have to, but also... I don't want to do that. And I don't think you should either. I think you should strive for a greater life if you want. And that greater life means you know you are better than this body that the universe puts you into. This can't be all there is. Unless you've decided it is. Then that's valid too, right? Okay, now two specific TikToks came into my brain when I was thinking about the person who was commenting. Of course, black people aren't a monolith. They come in all shapes and sizes and they all have different relationships with how they view themselves and their success in America. And I am grateful for the internet because it allows me to jump into their bubbles all the time and try to understand their lived experience, right? Two very different kinds of black men having two very di different perspectives and yet ultimately having the same perspective. They want good things for black communities, but look at how different they're going about doing it. One's MAGA, one's not MAGA. So you think we're better off as black people now than we were before LBJ passed those policies? Yes, brother. We, we can vote without the threat of violence. Are you talking about the Civil Rights Act of 1964? Is that what you're describing as, as, as a negative thing? I'm not saying the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was, I'm talking about... That's LBJ. I just want to be clear. That's LBJ who you said, were we better off before LBJ? LBJ signed the, war, the Civil said, Rights Act of 1964. I'm talking about the war on poverty. I just, I just want to answer that one. I want to answer that specific one first. Was the Civil Rights Act of 1964 bad? I agree with the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Thank you. But at the same time, I'm also put like this. I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. I don't know what that means. I'd rather deal with the dangerous freedom of not knowing and controlling people with policies as much as possible versus the peaceful slavery of being married and tied to the government. Um, Given Trump's well-documented history of... This is, this is, so as a person who grew up conservative... 
And as a person who was the Arab family token family in the group, I used to say shit like this all the time. As an immigrant, I actually think all these policies have har harmed communities of color. And I actually think, and I'm not even an immigrant, by the way, my parents are immigrants, right? I was born in California, girl. My name is Brittany. Okay. But that was the script you're given. Like the script you're given is when you're the token conservative is these policies suck for black communities. These policies suck for immigrants. Mexicans would be better with a wall. You're served a narrative that makes so much sense to their brains. And then when you deconstruct it, you're like, wait a f second. Haven't you heard people talk about how we need to um, make it impossible for women to vote? Like people are having these conversations and it's not good. So it's just a talking point and you learn the talking point and you stick to it and then you internalize the talking point. You can do this as a progressive or a, a right winger, a conservative. That's why I say the talking points of the bubbles are not the only relationship you can have with life. They're just a part of the bubbles construct. Okay, so then, okay, have you guys seen this TikTok? I saw this and this was like a really interesting bubble pop for me, but also why I say, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this again, I am not talking to black people. I am talking to minority communities who exist in a world where they have trauma because of the way they were raised as a minority. So I'm a queer person, I have trauma, I've been to therapy. Okay, I literally have a personality disorder. So I, okay, I'm not just speaking about black people. I'm speaking about all of us who are born into bubbles in which we then are traumatized by the bubble because the majority has given us a complex. And I'm saying you can deconstruct that complex, okay? And you can be much more than the perception of the bubble, but be careful and catch yourself because sometimes you project, project that trauma onto other people. I've done it, you've done it, we're all gonna do it. So. No big deal. You're not going to be punished for it, but okay. POV, black hair in the woods. That's what the typing says if you guys uh, can't see it. Yeah. You can see it. You're ready. What's going on with your hair? So if you guys can't see it and you're just listening, uh, it's a black girl. There's a camping site and her hair is like steaming outside. Okay, so evaporation, product, whatever is happening. And a girl's voice says, oh my gosh, what's happening to your hair? Your hair is your hair steaming. steaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Ah, what is that There's about? No way. Oh my God, you can see yeah. it. You can yeah. see it. <laughs> okay, the only visual, in fairness to people, is a white boy in front of her, or an alleged white boy. He looks white, but I don't know. He could be mixed. He probably is mixed, okay? So... Here's this like setting. Now, if you go to the comments, because when I first saw this, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, okay, I didn't think much about it. Like my brain just didn't process much about it. But then I went to the comments and I was like kind of confused. It says, these are not friendly laughs. So blink baby if you need help. Um, uh, let's see, this is giving get out, get out. Whoa, this is a canon event. Uh, and then um, let me see, uh, the laughs. Sis, you good. Um, it's a canon event. You know, it's all like basically the whole thing is just like, you know, negative. Now it's more positive, but it used to be really negative, the comments. Then, hold on, I just want to make sure I can bring this up. Look at, she's so happy. This is a video that came out a couple days after that initial video. Are you okay? Booze. Did we bully you? Did we make you <laughs> cry? Because I'm old. It's basically Tina's bullies, okay? <laughs> Oh my god. <sighs> <laughs> no, I can't do this right now. I can't. <laughs> okay, all of Tina's bullies are black. That's the joke. All her friends are black. They're black girls. Okay, this is the bullies. The fact that she was beautiful. There was something else. Something sort of mysterious. I didn't have a name for it, but it always kept me wanting her. And then she left in the middle of the semester. Okay, so they're joking about it because these are the bullies. Okay, oh God, yeah. then she says in the caption, y'all, it's our not... Oh, hold on. Let me make sure you guys can see it. 
She said, y'all, it's our it's our nonprofit kids that are POC who are reaching to her hair, are reacting to her hair. We got to make the a science lesson. I think it's science lesson out of it. And everyone thought it was cool. Please take your traumas elsewhere. We're healing on this side. Okay, I think that part is the most important, right? Please take your traumas elsewhere. We're healing on this side. I think that the audience members aren't bad people for seeing a black girl get laughed out about something to do with her hair and think this might be racist. I don't think it's wrong that the commenter on my video saw me making flirtatious comments about Abba and Preach and thought maybe it's a white woman fetishizing black guys, right? What I think is wrong is holding on to that narrative and not deconstructing why you had that initial response anyways and not thinking about the context of the situation. You know, no one's wrong for having an initial thought. No one's, well, you got to fight the bias and prejudice. But the idea is that no one's wrong for being worried. People are just worried for this girl. What's wrong is thinking you understand the situation, which is why in my content, not only do I take videos down, but I make corrections. I'm not perfect, but I do make corrections when I get shit wrong on my videos. And that's because, you know, sometimes we get it wrong, right? So I'm not saying the person who accused me of fetishizing Abba and Preach had bad intentions, but I would say that they were being pretty bad faith in some ways, but also just ignorant in others in a sense that they don't know me. They don't know my relationship with ABBA. They don't know my humor, you know? And so we do have opportunities to heal. I remember when I was fatter, my dad would make fat jokes and I just couldn't handle it. And I was like, I cannot handle you. You need to stop making these jokes. And he'd say, what's wrong with you? You used to be funny. You used to take jokes. And I said, yes, but my feelings are hurt in this moment and I'm raw and I'm bigger and I would like for you to stop making those jokes right now. And then now, of course, years later after therapy and everything, I feel better. We can make fat jokes again. I don't care. Right? And by the way, the joke my dad made that crushed me at the time was I hadn't seen him in a long time and I'd gained some weight. And he said, oh, Betsy, which means my daughter, look, there's more of you to love. And that made me want to die. That's all he said. All he said is, oh, there's more of you to love. A joke that never had hurt my feelings before. A joke that wouldn't hurt my feelings now. But just at the time that he had said it, it felt crushing. And that was because of mental health. And so I went to therapy to have a relationship with why I was upset that someone said, there's more of me to love. It is a fat joke, but it's a pretty okay one. I don't really mind. But that was on me. And so I put down a boundary and I said, if you keep making jokes that I can't handle at the moment, I'll leave. Not because I hate you, but because I need to protect my peace. That is in healing. I think what's really cool about opportunities like this is it gives me an opportunity to explain myself and why I think I've worked so hard to deconstruct these bubbles I never belong, but now I've made a bubble and I feel at home and it came down to deconstructing everything about myself. Now, look, for me, I very much value being a Syrian. I value being a woman and a man. I value being married to somebody who's unique. I value all of the things in my life that belong to bubbles. I value going home to a family. I value my relationships. I understand things are sensitive. I know there's politics at play, but you exist outside of the construct. You exist outside of the patriarchy. You exist outside of racism. You exist. If you ever feel trapped by these systems, know that you exist outside of them. Because I think you are more than where you are physically standing. I think you are much more than the body you were born into. And I really do think you are part of something so much greater than these systems convince you you're a part of. You are a part of literally the universe. Not to be hokey about it, but you are literally alive in the universe. That is way more important than this patriarchal system that formed because of years of war, evolution, and men. Your oppressor shouldn't have shouldn't get to define your relationship with yourself. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make
Texas, I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.